There are two ways to handle shopping in D&D. You either make it fun or you make it fast. If you and your players would prefer to just speed past shopping, then I am not trying to change your mind. Just keep on doing whatever works for your table. But if your players enjoy downtime roleplay and you want to be able to make shopping sessions fun and engaging for them and for you, then man, I've got a lot to say. And so does Bramble, the pixie proprietor of the Hedgerow. Welcome in. What do you want? Plants for decoration? Plants for healing? Plants for protection? Or travel? Or poison? Make it snappy, I haven't got all day. My griffin's tail lily is flowering soon, and no offense, but it's much better conversation. I recently created the Hedgerow for The Seeker's Guide to Enchanting Emporiums, a book that recently launched on Kickstarter. They sponsored this video so that I can tell you all about what I created for the book and what I learned doing it. It's gonna be 250 plus pages of magic item shops and merchants for 5th edition D&D. And they're more than just shops, they're full-blown adventure locations, including detailed characters, events, and quest hooks, on top of setting descriptions, art, and of course unique new magic items to stock the shelves and give your players something to spend their hard-earned gold on. Here's the thing, I've put together plenty of shops for my D&D tables over the years, but working on this project really leveled up my shop game and taught me a lot about how to make a shop not just a list of items and prices, but an engaging source of roleplay, and even part of your world building. So let's talk about how to make shopping fun using the hedgerow as an example so you can see these tips in practice. And of course, if you want to add the hedgerow and more than 20 other fantastic fully developed shops and traveling traders to your game, pledge on Kickstarter at the link in the description. When I first came to the mortal realm, your cities made me sick to my spiracles. How do you sleep at night without hearing the whispers of the trees? How do you live in stone boxes? Where's all the life? So I had to build my little greenhouse, you see? And some say it's gotten out of hand, but frankly, it's none of their business. That area is for authorized personnel only, so if they wander in and get kidnapped by a dryad or consumed by corpse moss, I'm not liable for that. If you want shopping to be fun, the first thing to remember is that the shop is secondary to the characters in and around it. We don't care about businesses, we care about people. So if you want your players to feel engaged during a shopping session, then you need more than a fun name and an inventory list, you need characters. The natural place to start is the shopkeep. Who runs this shop and why? Now, you don't need to come up with a full, complex backstory, but anything you can do to make your shopkeep feel like a real person instead of a cardboard cutout will help your players connect with them. I suggest that if nothing else, you give them two features, a quirk and a goal. For example, let's say your players visit an armory to upgrade their gear. The shopkeeper's quirk is that they're always singing, and their goal is to save up enough money from the profits of this shop to launch their musical career. Once a week, they host an open mic night after closing. Or maybe your players check out a magic item shop. This shopkeep's quirk is that she's always being shadowed by a reluctant, disinterested teenage son. Her goal is to train him to take over the family business when she retires. The purpose of a quirk is to make the character stand out, particularly in a circumstance like a shopping trip where the party will only interact with them for a short time. There are a lot of reasons you want characters to fall in love with a shopkeeper. Relationships with NPCs make players care about your world and feel invested in what happens in it. And memorable characters Characters bring that world to life and make it feel real. This also helps players learn about and keep track of the locations they visit. Meanwhile, the purpose of a goal is to make that character dynamic. Once your party cares about the shopkeep, you can use that goal to make sure that things change, giving your players a chance to interact and influence the course of events for these characters. Like maybe next time they visit the family-owned magic shop, the shopkeep tells them that she's retiring next month. Her teenage son pulls the party aside and begs them to bring him along and train him to be an adventurer. Do they help him, even if it means that there might not be a source of magic items in this town for them anymore? Or do they convince him to stay and take over the family business? And if they do, how does the new ownership affect the wares and prices and quality of the shop? Also, knowing a character's goal is super useful in roleplay scenarios. Anytime you have to ask yourself how your NPC would react to a situation, you can reference their goal. Tons of DMs get annoyed by players trying to roll persuasion checks for discounts and spending a ton of time haggling with shopkeepers. But that experience gets a lot more interesting and your players have to be more creative when your shopkeep has goals. The aspiring singer who runs the armory is probably unlikely to offer a discount unless the characters can provide something beneficial to their musical career. Offering to recommend them as entertainment for an upcoming event at the royal court might convince them to shave some gold pieces off the price. That'll be 53 gold pieces. No, let's not make it an even 50. What do you mean just plants? If you don't think my wares are worth it, then don't waste my time. And don't bother trying to haggle with the shrublets. They're not authorized to give discounts. 
Come back when you've learned to respect nature. Now scram! I know I've been very focused on the shopkeep here, but you might also consider developing characters around shop employees, or even other customers. In my write-up for The Hedgerow, there are several recurring NPCs that players can encounter when they visit, from the awakened shrubs that work for Bramble in the shop, to the bored dryad who lives in the greenhouse. I find that if you want players to develop a bond with an NPC, it's a good idea to give them a menu of options. They're not going to get attached to every NPC you throw at them, so feel free to come up with basic concepts for several and then wait to see which ones they like before you develop them any further. Listen, I hate to ask for a favor, but I'm at my wit's end. We've been trying to expand the caverns under the greenhouse so we can cultivate aquatic cave plants, but my excavation crews keep getting attacked. If I lose another shrublet to whatever's burrowing around down there, I'm gonna tear my antennae out. I'll let you pick some items from the shop for free if you can get to the bottom of it. What do you say? This might be obvious to some people, but I have to say it just in case it's an eye-opener for you. If you want shopping to feel like part of the story instead of just a chore, then you need to place narrative moments into shops. In between listing inventory and haggling for discounts, something has to actually happen. And there are tons of different ways to accomplish that. For example, you could tie a shop into another plotline. Maybe you need something from the shopkeep for a quest, but it's not for sale. Or they've already sold it to someone else. Or it was stolen. Maybe the shopkeep can give you what you need, but only if you complete a task for them first. The shop doesn't even need to be explicitly tied to the event in order to serve as its location. Like, maybe an attacker follows the party to the shop and attacks them while they're inside. You can also do the classic thing of using a shopkeep as a source for a quest hook. A merchant is exactly the type of person who needs errands run, materials fetched, and goods delivered. This is a perfect solution if your players need extra money, or just a way to fill some time. And of course, you can always throw some events into your shopping sessions just for flavor. An argument between a customer and the shop owner can establish character traits, or even atmosphere for the city. A store opening event or a going out of business sale can make your world feel dynamic and Alive. Remember, a merchant or employee or shop regular can be just like any other NPC in your game. A shopping session doesn't need to be any different from any other session, and locating plot-relevant NPCs in a marketplace or store helps blend those edges and make your world feel realistic. There's no reason that a marketplace or storefront needs to be any different from the other locations where characters can learn information, interact with complex characters, or run into conflict or complications. Of course, if something surprising happens every time you're your players go into a shop, it's gonna stop being surprising pretty quickly. Just because you can have stuff happen during shopping sessions doesn't mean that you should do that every single time. Part of making a world feel alive is making it feel unpredictable. If your party comes to expect that every single time they go shopping they'll have to catch a thief or tackle a fetch quest, that'll end up being just as repetitive as consistently uneventful shopping sessions are. Hey kid, thanks for your help with that sprite infestation last week. It's a shame about the fire damage though. Looks like we're gonna have limited stock for a while until we can get those repairs done. You should really talk to your wizard about that. This isn't gonna come up all the time, but one thing that I really loved about writing for Enchanting Emporiums is that I was encouraged to consider how the events that occurred inside or near the shop could affect the inventory. This is a great way to remind your players that they have a real impact on this world. Maybe they complete a fetch quest and that enables the shop to stock a new item or provide a new service. Or maybe the things they do or witness within the shop make it harder to get what they need. Here's something you might like. It's a watering can. Instead of pouring water out, it sucks water in. Whatever it collects, it stores up. But be careful, the moat it creates is dangerous. Explosive, even. You wouldn't want to... Ah, I see from your expression that you see that as a feature rather than a bug. Well, just don't test it out in the store. Another great way to make your shopping sessions more interesting is to make the actual items your players are shopping for more interesting. I mean, that is the point of shopping, right? Now, obviously the rule books are full of items, both magical and mundane, for your players to find and purchase. And I'm not saying that you should ignore those. You can pick out specific items to make available at specific shops, whether that's by theme or by random roll. And I don't think it's bad to have the basics, like crossbow bolts or incense or parchment, easily accessible everywhere. But if every shop has all the same items, or if your players are experienced enough with D&D to recognize, say, an alchemy jug or a wand of smiles, there are a lot of ways to spice up a shop's inventory and make sure shopping still holds some surprises. The most obvious answer is to home brew some stuff. Personally, I am a homebrew fiend and I really enjoy coming up with my own items. But if you don't feel comfortable creating your own, you can use one of the practically infinite third-party resources for magic items. But if you're nervous about offering too many magic items or homebrew stuff,
stuff being overpowered or unpredictable, there are tons of other ways to make shop stock more interesting. You can do homebrew light and just reflavor or tweak existing items, like reskinning an immovable rod as a stuffed rabbit of permanence, or turning a wand of fireballs into a scepter of psychic bursts and just changing the damage type. You can increase or decrease an item's power, like a secondhand robe of useful items that only has three patches left, or a bag of holding that comes pre-stocked with a selection of potions. An item doesn't even need to be magical or work differently in order to make the shopping experience more interesting. Like maybe a shop sells leather armor that has the exact same stats as any other leather armor, but this one is beautifully hand-tooled with intricate feather designs and has been painstakingly painted with red and gold accents. Or just because a blacksmith might have a plus one longsword to sell doesn't mean that they would call it that. Maybe it's Harpy's Bane, the legendary blade of a folk hero who saved the people of the town from a nest of harpies and bound some of their feathers to the hilt as a trophy. With the briar darts, we're looking at a total of- Hey! What part of do not touch don't you understand? If you poison yourself with those things, I'm not paying for the healer. So, to recap. Don't just make a shop, make characters. Make sure story is happening while you're shopping, and introduce some interesting items to keep your players on their toes. I know I said this at the beginning, but it bears repeating, you do not need to turn every shopping session into an engaging roleplay experience. You can always handle shopping in between sessions, or in the form of a montage, or whatever suits your table. And just because you want to roleplay shopping sometimes doesn't mean you need to do it every time. It's totally okay to change your approach depending on what the individual session calls for. But if you and your players do enjoy the occasional in-depth shopping roleplay, these three tactics can be used over and over again to create basically an infinite number of shops and merchants that feel individual and dynamic and alive. And of course, if that sounds like fun, but you don't feel like writing up your own shops, or you just want some inspiration, check out the link in the description to pledge for your copy of The Seeker's Guide to Enchanting Emporiums, where you can find my Pixie Bramble and her shop The Hedgerow, along with a bunch of other fully developed, unique shops for your game. You've met the Shrublets, of course. Sprig, Bud, Root, and their cousin Petal. Herb is out sick this week. They've got a nasty pest problem, and I don't want them spreading it everywhere. Twig is covering Herb's shifts in the meantime. Highly recommend hiring awakened shrubs if you get the chance. And not just because they want to be paid in fertilizer.